I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTracker.com, and today we're gonna break down the Yoshimira Ninja 400 Fender Eliminator install on our 2018 Kawasaki Ninja 400 STG project bike. Okay, this is the third fender eliminator we've installed on this bike already. What separates this from the other two that we did? The design is completely different. When I look at a Yosh fender eliminator, I see something that, you know what, it's tucked up in there, it looks a whole lot better, but it's closer to stock. Comes with a bright license plate light LED. Modular, if you don't want to install that, you don't have to, but that keeps your plate illuminated. That is probably one of the biggest reasons you can get hassled, right? Is if you have the plate dark, police definitely do not like that. This kit allows for reuse of the OE turn signals and it does it really, really well, okay? They slide in there. I'm gonna show you every step of the install. They fasten perfectly, right? So remember they're rubber mounted, so this is just the type of kit that's gonna last a long time, right? Odds of getting hassled are dramatically reduced. Good quality comes with a set of instructions that lead the way. These instructions are better than the instructions that we've seen with the other fender limiters. Yeah, those instructions are, they get it done for sure, but Yosh, you can see they really dot all the I's and cross all the T's, and for some people, that's really important. If you're interested in this kit and you wanna see what it takes to get this install done, just stay tuned, I'll show you every step of the way. Okay, we're gonna begin this install by removing the stock rear fender. You can see this thing is huge and exceptionally ugly. Take your passenger seat off. To do that, insert the key right here, turn it clockwise, lift up, pull forward. This comes right off. This tray, you can release this by pushing inward on that, right? It's going to lift it up. Realistically, you could do the project with it just in the upright position. To gain a little more access, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the cotter pins out of the hinges so I can slide it out of there. It's just gonna give us more room, make it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Okay, once you've done that, let's go ahead and expose the wiring for the turn signals and that license plate light. Depending on the kit you're installing and whether or not it offers a license plate light, you may or may not reuse all of the stock harnesses. Slide this protective boot back to expose the connectors. They are a little tight, okay? They definitely are a little to the tight side here. Push down on the release tang. Just give you a close look at that right there. This is what you want to push down on, okay? Use this T-handle to point at it right here. You push down on that, that's gonna allow you to release the connector. And the next one, push down that release like so. You should not have to pull very hard after you've depressed the release, okay? If you have to pull really hard, that means it's not disengaged and you're in danger of damaging the wires and you don't wanna do that. You can see that we have two different style connectors here. This one, in order to release it, you need to push down essentially right here and that will release it from the other side of the connector. At this point, you can take each of these three harnesses and slide them through the tail. There's a hole right there, slides right through. From here, we're gonna grab our five mil T-handle. Got four fasteners to remove. Boy, once again, I gotta give it to Kawasaki in there. 
this was really well engineered and certainly easy to take apart and work on which is great because this bike is going to be really popular with not only you know seasoned riders but certainly new riders it's a great way to get you introduced to the sport and to a big part of it which is wrenching on your own machine there you have it there is that stock rear fender and notice this there's a metal brace on the inside here plastic shroud and then of course we've got you know our standard plastic slash rubber turn signals this thing is huge and it's actually kind of heavy so installing a fender eliminator on this bike you're going to shave some weight back here in the tail section okay before we dive all the way into the install we've already shown you the removal yoshimura these are the instructions that come with this fender eliminator kit and i'm going to give them credit where credit's due right now this is probably the most comprehensive set of instructions well laid out that you'll get with a fender eliminator kit so that's definitely an advantage with the yosh kit there's a few ways you can install this by design the kit is intended to use you have a license plate light here a little led light we're going to wire this in you've got a plate frame you've got your main bracket and then it has two brackets that are intended to hold the oem turn signals okay these brackets have optional replacements if you want to install aftermarket turn signals on the back of the bike, they have optional brackets you have to buy separately that allow you to easily install those. Realistically, most riders are going to, especially on this Ninja, are going to reuse the OEM turn signals. They look pretty good on the bike, right? So it's just a great way to go. So we're going to focus on that during this install. Okay, we need to retrieve the OEM turn signals from the stock rear fender before we begin. There were fasteners that held a big metal bracket to this plastic piece. I removed them. There were just four. Pull the metal bracket out. It's going to allow me to remove these. Before we go too much farther, I just want to note, ours are going to look a little bit different than yours. I've already cut these harnesses, so I spliced them back together for the purpose of this video. If your bike's brand new and never been worked on before back here in the fender area, this is just going to be a continual sleeve of insulation, so you won't see that, that bulge or that splice in the center. I've also previously already cut the license plate light connector. I have that over here stripped and ready to go to install the Yoshimura LED plate light. Now to retrieve the rear turn signals off this, this plastic piece, piece has a little bit of flex to it. You can see that there's a screw right here. It's a Phillips screw, kind of flex the panel. I'm using a longer Phillips screwdriver so I can get good access to it. And you need to break those loose. Like so, and you can see I was kind of flexing the panel to allow me to get that Phillips head screwdriver in there nice and square so you're not rounding it off. Once you have the screw all the way out, there is another retainer plate right inside here. You want to loosen that up like so. That's just going to kind of be held in place here by the harness. Yours will slip down a little bit further towards the connector. Now you take and manipulate the end of the turn signal like so and that's just rubber it's meant to be able to manage vibration and that comes right off we need to do that for both sides important to note also the gray connector is for the left turn signal or the clutch side same process here on the other side a little easier to get the second screw out because we can just go through the hole here These OE Cowie turn signals look pretty decent. Like I said, I feel like most riders are probably just going to roll with these. What's nice about leaving the incandescent bulb signals in that you don't have to mess with a flasher relay or any of that. It's going to install it. Or the flash rate's going to be right. It's going to look really good on the bike too. Just cleans it up quite a bit in the back. Now that we have both of those turn signals off and ready to reinstall, we're going to begin building our Yosh fender eliminator put it on the bike all right license plate light I'm assuming you're gonna to want to reuse this you're gonna feed the harness through the hole here in that main mounting bracket you 
Get everything lined up nicely. And the fasteners are right here. Just to make sure this stays together. I'm going to put just the tiniest little bit of blue Loctite here. This is really optional. It, it doesn't call this out in the instructions. Using just a tiny little bit. Before you splice together the connector, it's important that you install this on that main bracket because once you install the connector on it, you splice that together, it will not in fact slide through there. Okay, so this is an important step here. It's also best practice to leave that plate light on the bike. You want the plate illuminated. Realistically, it dramatically reduces the possibility of you getting hassled if the plate is properly illuminated. Put a reasonable amount of torque on these. It's a small fastener. Plus we have a little bit of thread locker on there. Once you have that installed, you want to strip back the wires about a quarter inch or so on that OE harness. So we'll do that real quick. Yosh has supplied a couple of cool shrinkable solder connectors with this that uh, are actually pretty pumped to use. Okay, now we need to read the instructions and understand which wire connects because I do believe that the polarity needs to be correct here. So red to red, okay, super simple, black to black with yellow stripe. That's pretty much what I expected it would be. This will be my first go with this new butt connector, so I'm kind of excited to see how well that does or does not work. So let me give that a little twist. You want to make sure that you have overlap here. The center portion of that, that is your solder. Okay, so you want to make sure that the wires are overlapping each other right there. See here, this fits a little bit tighter with the uh, OE harness. So I'm going to just shrink the end a little bit here. Now that that's held in place, I can go ahead and slide this in. Kind of hold it so it keeps a little tension here and we'll shrink the other end. And once you've sealed up the two ends, per the instructions, you should be able to just heat the center. They said you can do this with a cigarette lighter heat gun. I'm going to use this micro torch that I have. So we see the solder start to flow. That is actually pretty bitching. That works pretty nice. I'm trying to be careful with it not to get it too hot and just melt the outside down, but you can see that's flowing through there real nicely. That's super sweet. Make sure the ends are sealed. Need to make sure you let it cool down before you install it, but you can clearly see that that has flowed through and the wires now are forever soldered together. Okay, now let's assemble the entire eliminator and get it ready to install on the bike. As I said earlier, we're going to reuse our OE turn signals. Okay, so we're going to use the bracket supplied with the kit. You want to fasten them to the main bracket like so so the indent is inboard. 
fastener goes through the plate frame, then the plate, main bracket, turn signal bracket, washer, and then a locking nut. These locking nuts are nice. No need for any type of thread locker here, and it guarantees you're not going to lose your plate or have your, your whole fender limb just kind of loosen up over time. There's a lot of vibration back there, not only from the machine running, but, you know, bumps you hit, so on and so forth. To assist with installation, I'm going to snug the two top fasteners up just a bit. Once we get everything on the motorcycle, we can always loosen it up to move things around, you know, if the alignment's not exactly what we want. Just going to kind of eyeball it for right now, get even side to side. Like I said, just the two up here on the top. like so. Now we've got the left side of the kit right here. If you remember earlier in the video I said the gray connector that is for the left signal. Go ahead and feed that through the Yosh supplied bracket. Okay now we need to install this. Slip that over. You have to manipulate the rubber end of the turn signal and force it through that hole. There's a ridge there that when it passes through, it's going to retain itself. I'm just going to use the uh, T-handle I have here just to help push it down a little bit, kind of tuck it in. Like so. Wiggle it around. Okay, you can see that's all the way through now. Slide this back over. You want to make sure that the nut is inward, okay, facing towards the turn signal. If yours comes off like that one just did, I need to slide it into the rubber end of that turn signal and then push it down far enough that the tangs jump over it, okay. Once you've done that, you can install this bracket. Like so, the cutout goes towards the wiring harness. Get your Phillips screw. You can go ahead and torque that down right now. Mirror image on the other side. Pass that through. Make sure you have the lens facing in the right direction, obviously. Force that down in there. And we need to push that down. Get it all tucked through, like so. See it kind of jump over. the lock back down in here. Like so, make sure the tangs all jump over it, which they have. Lock plate, cut out towards the harness. Get your little Phillips screw. Torque that down. Okay, now we're ready to take it over the bike and bolt it up. I'm going to use the OE bolts. I'm going to put just a little bit of blue thread locker on them, okay? The bolts are going to come in through the bottom and we'll use the Yosh supplied nuts up on the top. 
So we're using factory hardware. for the bolts and considering that the OE fender limb had the nuts welded to it, Yosh had to supply nuts. So I'm going to put a little bit of thread locker on each one of these. I don't think this was included in the instructions, but at the end of the day, you know, this just kind of seals the deal. You know, if you do a good job with your connectors, get everything bolted up correctly, it just reduces the possibility of you having to revisit this anytime in the near future, right? Make it kind of a trouble-free install. So we'll get all four of these fasteners in place. And torque it down. Okay, once you have all four fasteners in, that's a 12 mil nut on the top. We have a five millimeter, millimeter internal hex fastener. Okay, I'm going to double check the alignment. It all looks good. Those nuts are serrated on the back, so they, realistically they're going to hold themselves there while you torque them down. If they don't, you'll need to get a backup wrench or a ratchet and socket up there, whatever you happen to have handy. That is 12 mil and you can fit in there. If you prefer to torque this down, you're going to have to Google your torque spec here to get the OE torque specification. Really, there's no reason to do that with a fender eliminator. A couple passes on the bolts just to make sure everything's nice and even. Those nuts fit real nicely, so there's no need at all for a backup wrench. I'm going to raise the table up now and just kind of finish the alignment of the fender limb, and then we'll fish the wires through and get everything connected. Let's make sure we get this hardware all snugged up back here. This is now the third fender eliminator we've installed on the Ninja 400. Each one of them, as you can see, has its own style, right? You know, this one I'd kind of like rank up there as like, you know, a traditional style. The New Rage, it was edgy, fresh design. The Driven that we installed really robust you know billet aluminum its own unique look and lines okay all the hardware down below is tight now we can take and pass through the wiring harnesses up into the tail section through that hole right there I will of course tidy all this up before we're done. You want a nice clean look here in the back. Before that happens, I want to get it all plugged in and make sure the wiring works. Okay, so I'll we'll pass through here. We've got left turn signal is gray, right is black. Here is our plate harness. A little extra length here, really not a big deal. We can just kind of wad that up nicely and secure it with a cable tie. Slide all these together. And then we can just test the lights before we go any further here. What you don't want to do is get it all wrapped up and then find out you made a mistake. You got an issue with one of the uh, connectors or one of the wires. Okay. Let's go ahead and key it up. First thing we want to check is the plate light. You see that illuminates the plate really nice. I highly recommend leaving that on there. It's going to dramatically reduce the possibility of you getting hassled. There's our left signal. You can see the flash rate is proper because we're still using those incandescent turn signals that came stock on the bike. And realistically, Kawasaki does a great job with their OE signals. Those things look pretty darn good. Okay. Everything's working. Now we can focus on just tidying up the wiring and making it look as clean as possible. Okay, I've got everything tidied up down here. I've got it secured. It's inside the protective boot. Fit nicely, right? It's all good to go. So we've got space here in the trunk, which is nice. 
need to reinstall this panel that I like to remove when I'm doing the fender limbs. Got little hinge pins here. There's a cotter pin that goes on the other side, so we'll pop those back in. And when I come back, we'll have the rear seat on and we'll finish this project up. Okay, there we go. Install is complete. Everything's buttoned up. Really like the way this looks on the bike. It gets the fender a lot higher, but it, you know, the Yosh kit really puts it in a position where, you know, the odds of getting hassled or having problems are dramatically reduced. This looks kind of OE, right? But we all know it's not. It's a lot higher up. It's a lot tidier. You know, the turn signals fit beautifully in there. That plate light illuminates it really, really well. The quality is good. And like I said, too, the instructions that come with this kit are the best with any fender limb that we've seen thus far for this bike. Just makes the project a whole heck of a lot easier. If you want to come on over the side real quick, Steve, and just kind of show you the, what I did here with the wires. See, they're just tucked up in there. It's a nice, clean look. There's one little cable tie that I secured them together with and slid it up in there, so it's nice and tidy. End of the day, I like the way it installed. I like the quality of it. I'm Brian Van. This is the Yosh Fender Limb on our 2018 Kawasaki Ninja 400 STG project bike.